Last time on the Gospel According to John, Abraham loses his wife and buries her at Machpelah. He instructs Eliza to go find a wife for Isaac from among his relatives. The first female Eliza bumps into happens to be Rebecca, and they return triumphant. Isaac thinks his cousin is hot, and all is well until she gives birth to twins. The boys grow up, and Jacob turns out to be a conniving little fucker, tricking his brother Esau into giving away his rights as firstborn, and stealing his father's blessing with an elaborate and preposterous ruse. God is unexplainably pleased, apparently, as Jacob is about to become his new BFF. What kind of shenanigans are we in store for today? Find out next on the Gospel According to John! Hello Gospel fans, welcome back. When we last left off, Esau wanted to kill Jacob's ass. So Rebecca warns Jacob that Esau wants to kill him, and is like, go Jacob, go stay with my brother Laban in Haran. Hey, that rhymes. Maybe you can grab yourself a sexy cousin wife or something. She says to Isaac, Let's send Jacob to live with my brother Laban. It would kill me if he married a hitchhike woman. I'm a queen. So Isaac called for Jacob and blessed him and commanded him, Do not marry a Canaanite woman. Go at once to the house of your mother's brother in Bethuel, and take your wife for yourself from among his family. Then Isaac sent Jacob on his way, and he went to Padanaram, to Laban, son of Bethuel the Aramean, the brother of Rebekah, who was the mother of Jacob and Esau. Thanks for laying all that out for us, Bible. So Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night, taking one of the stones there. He put it under his head and lay down to sleep. And he had a dream. Golden staircase was resting on the earth with its top reaching into the heavens and God's angels were ascending and descending upon it. There above it stood God himself and he said, I am the God of your fathers and I will follow you around wherever you go and bless you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Holy shit. Surely the Lord is in this place and I just didn't realize it. Then Jacob made a vow saying, I know I'll put it to the test. If God will provide for me and bless my journey, then he will be my God. Jacob continued on his journey and came to the land of the Eastern peoples. Because I fucking love maps. There he saw a well, some sheep, and the shepherds tending them. Jacob asked the shepherds, Yo guys, do you know Laban, and is he well? Yes, he is, they said. And here comes his daughter Rachel with the sheep. So when Jacob saw Rachel, daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and Laban's sheep, and Laban's sheep, he went over and rolled the stone away from the mouth of the well, and watered his uncle's sheep. So then Jacob kisses Rachel out of nowhere and starts crying. Rachel, it's me, your cousin Jacob. Mwah, 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 mwah. So she ran and told her father. Laban comes out to meet him and invites Jacob into his house. What's up, Uncle Laban? I'm Rebecca's son, Jacob. Aha! <laughs> you are my own flesh and blood! After Jacob had stayed with him for a whole month. Uh, oh, we're jumping ahead. Laban said to him, J Jacob, we're related. You don't have to work for free. What, what would you like your wages to be? Dude, I'll work my ass off for you for seven years if I can have your daughter, Rachel. Haha, <laughs> sold! So Jacob served seven years to get Rachel, but they seemed like only days to him because of his love for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Yo uncle, it's been seven years, I want to go balls deep into your daughter. So Laban calls all his buddies together and they have a great big feast, as most men would do in this situation. But when the time came, Laban gave Jacob Leah instead of Rachel. And Jacob fucked her. <gasps> When morning came, there was Leah. Jacob said to Laban, What the fuck, man? I toiled for seven years to get the hot one! Why don't you finish up the marital week with Leah, then you can have Rachel too, if you work another seven years for me. And Jacob did so. He finished out the marital week with Leah, and proceeded to boink Rachel in exchange for another seven years of servitude. And he worked for another seven years. When God saw that Jacob loved Rachel more than Leah, he opened Leah's womb, of course. God promises to help Jacob out, and then he's like, You know what? I think it might actually be more fun just to fuck with him. Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Reuben, for she said, 
Surely my husband will love me now. She conceived again. Because the Lord has seen that I am not loved. See, still not loved. He's given me a second son. She named him Simeon. Again she conceived, and when she gave birth to a son, she said, At last Jacob will love me because I've given him three sons. She named this one Levi. She conceived again and gave birth to a son, and she said, You know what? Fuck Jacob. This time, I'm going to praise the Lord. So she named him Judah. And she stopped having children. When Rachel saw that she was not bearing Jacob any children, she became jealous of her sister. So she said to Jacob, Jacob, I'll simply die if you don't give me children. Jacob became angry with her and said, Bitch, who do you think I am? God? Take it up with him. She said, well, Take Bilhah, my maidservant, and have a child by her. It will be mine. So she gave him her maidservant Bilhah as another wife, and Jacob fucked her too. And she became pregnant too, and bore him a son. And Rachel said, God has vindicated me and given me a son. Because of this, she named him Dan. Bilhah bore Jacob a second son. Then Rachel said, I have had a great struggle with my sister, and I have won. So she named him Naphtali. So it's two to three. No, no, it's two to four at this point. And uh, she thinks she's won. When Leah saw that she had stopped having children, she had Jacob bang her maidservant, Zilpah. Leah's servant, Zilpah, bore Jacob a son. And then Leah said, Oh, what good fortune. So she named him God. Zilpah bore Jacob another son. Then Leah said, How happy I am. So she named him Asher. Years pass over the course of all this, obviously, and one day, Reuben goes out into the fields and finds some mandrake plant. Rachel said to Leah, Please, give me some of your son's mandrake. Wasn't it enough that you took my husband, and now you want my son's mandrakes too? Shit, you can have Jacob tonight if I can have those mandrakes. <laughs> sold. Now, mandrakes are a root, and at the time they were believed to increase fertility. They also contain some very strong alkaloidic uh, hallucinogens. So it's kind of interesting that even in the text, it clearly states that this family is eating hallucinogens. So when Jacob came in from the fields that evening, Leah came out to meet him, and she was like, You're sleeping with me tonight. I hired you with my son's mandrake. So he slept with her that night. God listened to Leah, and she became pregnant again and bore Jacob a fifth son through her. God has rewarded me for giving my maidservant to my husband. Wait, what? So she named him Issachar. <laughs> Leah conceived again and bore Jacob a sixth son. Then Leah said, God has given me another son, and boy am I tired. Call him Zebulun. Sometime later, she gave birth to a daughter and named her Dina. Gave birth to a daughter? And it's making note of it? Then God remembered Rachel. Oh, right. Rachel gives birth to a son and she says, Finally, the Lord has taken away my disgrace. He named him Joseph. As his only son with the woman he loves, Joseph is Jacob's favorite. After Rachel gave birth to Joseph, Jacob said to Laban, All right, my time is served. I want to take my wives and my children and go home to the house of my father. But Laban said to him, Oh, please stay. Your God has obviously blessed me because of you. Name your wages. Jacob said to him, Dude, you've prospered greatly with my help. Just give me all your striped or speckled goats and my family and I will go. Oh. And any spotted or speckled sheep, too. Agreed, said Laban. Let it be as you have said. That same day, he removed all the male goats that were streaked or spotted, and all the dark-colored lambs, and he placed them in the care of his sons. Jacob, however, took fresh-cut branches from poplar, almond, and plane trees, and made white stripes on them by peeling the bark and exposing the white inner wood of the branches. Hee <laughs> hee I'm so clever. He then places these in front of all the sheep that he, and goats and stuff that he actually wants to breed. And wouldn't you know it, they all come out speckled or spotted. How the fuck does that work? Duh, mysterious ways. Oh, also, it's important to note that, uh, Selective breeding and evolution by natural selection are different things, and this no in no way suggests that there might be similar forces at work here. So Laban's sons start bitching because of how successful Jacob has become. 
He also noticed that Laban was being more and more of a dick to him. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Okay, it's time to go home now. So Jacob sent word that Leah and Rachel should come out of the fields and come talk to him. He said to them, My darling, and Leah, my God says it's time for me to go home. Plus, your dad's being a total dick to me. He keeps changing my wages and shit. I can't help it if I get all the good goats. All I did was what God's angel told me to do in a dream. During mating season, I dreamt that the ones that were mating were the striped and speckled one. This guy has four chicks, and he dreams about goat sex. So God has seen what Laban's been doing. Jacob, you swore to be my bitch. Now do as I say and get back to your father's house. And Rachel and Leah replied, Do we still have any share of our father's estate? <laughs> ah, that's good. Yeah, our father is a dick. We're with you. So Jacob loaded up his families and all of their stuff and took off. Before they leave, Rachel steals her father's idols for no apparent reason. Laban receives word that Jacob and his families took off, and he goes after them. Then God came to Laban the Aramean in a dream at night and said to him, be very careful that you do not say anything good or bad to Jacob. Then Laban said to Jacob, Dude, you are an asshole, carrying off my daughters like captives in war. I didn't even get to kiss my grandchildren goodbye. You've done a foolish thing. I have the power to harm you. But last night the god of your father said to me, Be careful not to say anything to Jacob, either good or bad. And oh shit, I just, I just said a whole bunch of stuff to you, didn't I? Well, that's beside the point. Why did you steal my idols? Jacob answered Laban, I was afraid because I thought you would take your daughters away from me by force. But if you find anyone who has your gods, he shall not live. See for yourself here in the presence of our relatives. If there's anything of yours, then take it. So Laban searches all of their tents, but finds nothing. Rachel, meanwhile, has them in her camel saddle and is sitting on top of them. Do not be angry, father, but I cannot rise to greet you. I'm having my period. <laughs> and he goes for it. He doesn't he doesn't say another thing. It's like, whoa, oh gr girl stuff. Okay. Jacob's pissed. He's like, so what again was my crime? Oh, and by the way, God's on my side, motherfucker. Exactly. So what am I to do? Let's uh, sign some kind of non-aggression pact, what do you say? So they build a pile of rocks to signify the fact that they've made an agreement. So Jacob took an oath in the name of the fear of his father, Isaac. He offered a sacrifice there in the hill country and invited his relatives to a meal. After they had eaten, they spent the night there. Early the next morning, Le Laban kissed his grandchildren and his daughters goodbye, and everyone parted on happy terms. I think that's a good place to end this episode. This has been the Gospel According to John. This has been a Cinnabon. It's nearly gone. Good night, everyone. Sleep tight. Next time on the Gospel According to John, more weird shit goes down. Stay tuned! <laughs>